Alright, alright. Whoa! Welcome back to the Abundant Harvest Homestead. I'm Papa Pepper today. I'm in the pit. I'm gonna to try to make this pit a root cellar slash storm shelter. And uh, the root cellar aspect, it's more like a cool temperature basement for storing canned goods and stuff like that. Less of a ground contact, uh, high humidity, you know, contact with the earth place to store vegetables and tubers and potatoes and stuff like that. So, clarification there. Um, took a bunch of repurposed discarded pieces of concrete and I, I would flip two of them together leave the smooth side up like a stair make all these steps today I'm gonna be taking this I don't know masonry bag I'm gonna mix up some mortar I'm gonna squirt a bunch in all these little cracks so it looks like one flush stair then also on my walls I'm gonna do the same thing um, these are pretty solid I like the way I did it they're angled out slightly, so there's less of a chance of them tipping in. There's a lot of uh, horizontal support back there and a lot of upright too. This one here um, was tight against the wall, but I didn't want to uh, cut it at the time, so I figured I'll just put it in place. My goal is to grind off all this and some of this, and then I'm going to kind of touch up all the cracks here. Some of these cracks are pretty big, and the goal was just to mortar them in afterwards to secure them all and give me a a nice wall here. So that's part of my project today. Be using the grinder, be using this, and uh, see how far we can make it. Um, I'm gonna talk to my guy soon about the lid. I also may need to visit with a friend who's done stuff like this before. Get a little more direction and instruction because back here behind me, camera was just sitting here for frame of reference. So back here behind me, gonna pour a lid for my root cellar. And uh, it's also gonna be a floor for an outdoor kitchen. Initially, I was gonna head in over here in the corner. That's why these are bent out of the way rather than sticking out like that. I was gonna come down at an angle in a ladder with a corner, decide, you know what, no, let's cut a hole in there and let's make some steps all the way out instead. And uh, by doing things the way I did, this was a very cheap project because I repurposed so much. So I really like that. Obviously, bringing a concrete truck in here, the rebar, the wood, the lumber for framing it. I got a lot of stuff invested in already, um, so when I can cut corners as far as cost, but wind up with a really solid, good um, project, that's what I'm looking at. So let's get in the pit, let's get this going. For this other part, I'm gonna see if I can knock off all the stuff that's hanging here that I don't want and maybe get like a metal brush or something like that. Um, I think I'm gonna start with the stairs though and then come into the wall after that. Um, these stairs, I need to clean off a bit. There's stuff like this here where you got all this dust. You got some mortar too, look at that. You know, I'm gonna be working on all the seams around here. So I'm gonna scrape all this clean, maybe with a big wide putty knife, and then uh, 
then start going from there, but I'm excited because the more I work on this, of course, the closer I get, the nicer it looks. Mama Pepper likes it, so we're gonna see what we can do here. Check that out. You guys know what that is? Hey, bugger! Come here! Guys, this is cool. This is uh, an exoskeleton from a tarantula. Oh, man. I'm trying to unfold it here. Hold on. If you guys see that, all the little legs are here, but nobody's home. It's not a real, um, boy, those fangs look impressive too. You guys can, you guys can see those fangs or not, but wow. Bug, check out what I found. Come on down here. Monster truck, you too. You good boys know what that is? An exoskeleton of a tarantula. Yeah, exoskeleton of a tarantula. Look at that bug. Did you ever find a tarantula before? Yeah. You did? What'd you think? It's a tarantula, a tarantula. Yeah, we made a video about that one, right? So that's just the exoskeleton. You know how your bones are on the inside? Mm -hmm. Their hard part of their body is on the outside, so when they get bigger, they crawl out of there and then they leave that, but it almost looks like a real tarantula, don't it? Mm -hmm. You can uh, look at the fangs too if you wiggle the legs and look at its mouth. You see that? Mm -hmm. If it bit you, and you know what? The real one might be around here too. What's in that hole? Anything? There's something in there. There's a spider web. I don't think it's tarantula though. All right, I'm gonna keep working. You guys can put that somewhere safe or show it to the rest of the family, okay? That's fine. All right. I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. All right, boys, clear out. Papa's gotta work. What are you doing? Looking for spiders? <laughs> Part of what I love about being out here um, in such a natural environment is uh, there's a lot of crazy cool creatures around here. When we moved to the Ozarks, we didn't realize we were moving into tarantula territory. We didn't know that at all. Then we started seeing them come around here. And actually, as soon as the, like the fall migration, the breeding season, all the males, a lot of times they'll just live in holes, but they'll come out and they'll be crawling across the roads looking for mates out on the prowls. So that's normally when we encounter a lot of them, which is really cool. I just missed it. It went underneath there. Monster truck! Yes, sir. Snake! Uh, black rat snake. I'm not sure if it's the only one in here, so be careful, but go peek in that corner. I don't know if you'll need a stick, but a black rat snake just zoomed underneath there. You see anything? Yeah, I see him. You do? I hear it rattling. Uh, You're sure it's a black rat, right? Yeah. 
bug. Come check this out. Can you reach it or no? Okay, I can now. I can almost. I'm just trying to turn him around. See what comes from. Is it going up? No, but I'm going to turn it to here. If you can't, I can. I got it. Boy, I hear it rattling again. Yeah, I got it. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Pull it out and hand it to me. How big is it? Pretty big one. Oh. He's on by the head. He's trying to bite first. It was all right, all right. Whoa. So this is one of the common ones we have in our area. What kind is this, guys? Black rat. Black rat. A black rat snake. Uh, something like Pantherophis obsoleta. <coughs> or something like that. Um, they are said to be as about as arboreal as they are terrestrial, meaning they'll climb up in trees. They will climb straight up the face of a tree or even like sometimes siding. And uh, yeah, what do they like to eat? Uh, rats and mice and eggs. Rats, rats mice, eat. eggs, little birds, stuff like that. So this guy's not exactly a good guy to have around here because of our poultry, our eggs and our chicks and our quail and stuff like that, but um, they are good to have around for uh, pest control, right? Yeah. And uh, recently when I was working on getting some extra blocks, I caught two of these under one rock. Are those up by the quail barn? Yeah. Run and grab them quick. We still got those two. I think they're up there. So I'll give them all a, a ride together and send them on the way, but yeah, pretty cool. This one too, it looks like it's freshly shed. So go kind of from that white to a white and black, sometimes like a black and a red just to a solid black. This one's incredibly iridescent right now and uh, pretty cool. If I just let it go, check that out. It'll climb like straight up the wall of there. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, buddy. So actually I've been working on this project. There's been a lot of different creatures. I've seen lizards running around here. There are butterflies coming on the wet mortar. Um, there was a frog. It pooped on one of my ledges about here or something. So kind of cool. When we were kids, we used to actually just dig deep pits and uh, we'd catch snakes that way because they'd crawl in and they wouldn't be able to crawl out. I think that's also way down in South America. Hey bug, yeah, bring me that one quick. And that one is fighting to bite Michael. Okay, so here we go. Here's one of the ones from before. Pretty cool, pretty quick. Oh, this guy's all glossy-eyed too. Um, I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh, it's about to shed. It can't really see very well. Cool. And then here's the other one. So look at that. Three crazy snakes in my pit right now. Not too bad. They're musking right now too, so I can really smell that they're um, going off. And this one here is smelling me, obviously. They're all about the same size, but oh, one's going up the wall again. Whoa. Kind of uh, difficult to keep track of them all, but they're all here. And you guys get to go to a new home. Boy, stay back for a minute. Look at that guy right there. See that? Part of it is he has uh, glossed over eyes. He can't see right now. So he's sitting there and trying to uh, be defensive. Not, not aggressive, just defensive because he can't see good. He doesn't know what's going on. 
So at the moment, he's kind of seeing me as a threat right there. If you guys can see all their heads together there, three nice big ones. But, wow. We like them, and uh, there's really no reason ever to kill snakes like this. I know a lot of people just kill all snakes. It doesn't make any sense. There's so few that are actually dangerous in the United States. There's really only four kinds I consider to be a venomous threat to humans. That's going to be the rattlesnakes, copperheads, cottonmouths, and the coral snake. So once you can identify kind of those three kinds of uh, North American pit vipers, being rattlesnakes, cottonmouths, and copperheads, and once you know what a coral snake looks like, every other indigenous species isn't really going to be a problem. And you don't really need to be ignorant and freak out. But, wow, there we go. Whew. We'll have to take these guys for a let go, okay, kids? Sir. Well, <clears throat> battery cut out when I was trying to film. So you can see, got it going in. I got more work to do, but then also, look at that guy. See that? I got him now. And this is the one that that exoskeleton was from. It is, let's see, look at how freshly shed that is. That guy's amazing. Once I held on to three of these at the same time, they don't seem to care too much about people, but um, I guess they can bite. Oh yeah, there's the exoskeleton. Thanks, monster truck. Show them next to it. Yeah. So, what do you think about that guy? Pretty big. Pretty big. Um, do would you? Yeah. Oh, it's oh. stuck on my elbow. Oh, it's stuck on here. Yeah, whoa, buddy. It feels weird. Use two hands, give me that. Yeah. Did you know we were moving somewhere that had spiders that big? Yeah. I didn't either. You ever see uh, tarantula hawks? Yeah. They're a big wasp that'll actually, their sting is so bad, when they get these guys, they kill them. They paralyze them, actually. Oh, those blue-looking things? Those blue wasps? Iridescent? Yeah. They can be, yeah. Actually, I know their stings are terrible, but I did hold on to one once. I forget why. Probably just because I wonder about things. Yeah, wow. Look at how black those legs are. I mean, compared to the um, exoskeleton that was really brown, this guy is vibrant. So I do not know if this is a male or a female. If you know how to tell apart, let me know. I'm um, not above learning things, but pretty cool, huh? You don't want to wear him as a beard? <laughs> I can see him, he's wiggling. I think about spiders and snakes on our property. It's pretty cool. I think so too. So we gotta find a happy place to get this guy as well. Watch your steps because you're on the stuff. Wow. Now this one would be fine to let go on our property, but what would be his main problem if we let him go on our property, do you know? Um, he could kill things? Well, he wouldn't really kill things too much, that'd be a problem. But I bet our chickens would kill him. Would peck the peck him like crazy. And what would our dogs do? Probably peck them like crazy too. Did you hear what Shiva caught earlier? No. The animal? Oh, a mole? A mole. Moles are one of those ones that most people can agree on. They don't really like. And uh, our dog actually, I don't know, like tore up a whole line of stuff after, right? Yeah, yeah it actually like chased one under the ground by digging and actually pulled it out and uh, killed it. So that was kind of interesting. Oh, would you guys hold on to one like this? <laughs> I don't, um, you can see it's super chill. It's not causing any trouble right now. It just looks intimidating, doesn't it? If I get bit, please call somebody. I don't think I'll get bit. Wow. 
This is probably gonna make some of you not like my videos as much, huh? You got that turtle we found? Let's show him something cute instead. Uh, gently so you don't scare it back in. Yeah, look at that, guys. This, I'm guessing, is a nice female box turtle. It's got like one of the most bland, plain shells I've seen. But look at the spot pattern on that thing. On its head and on its front, it's just covered in spots. And the nice white beak, too, so. Another cool animal we got around here. Maybe you'll come on a little more. Maybe. Oh, you got scared of me. I know. Okay. It's okay. Looking at the tarantula's fangs. Yeah. That's a girl right there. See, that's not quite as bad. And here's the size of that tarantula compared to it. Whoa. It's not exactly a small turtle, you know, as far as box turtles go. But that is a pretty big spider, especially for our area. We've got some other ones, but for the tarantulas, that's pretty good size. Ah! Man, I just got bit by this snake. I was picking him up for the uh, cover photo. He did better. Faster. And uh, really fast. tagged me right in my hand. Let's get that cover photo before I get bit again. In my opinion, life is important, even if it's life that a lot of people don't care about or care for. So my goal is just to find a remote location where everything that these guys need is gonna be here. They're gonna be able to do what they were designed to do, and they're gonna be able to come in contact with a lot less people than they normally would, and that'll help them. There you guys go. If anyone wants a drink, there's definitely water right here too. You're going up in the woods. Those two, I'm gonna turn this one around. Whoa, see that one? Shh. Just gonna let you see there's a water there. Yeah, look at that. I don't even see, okay, there's one there. They will die one day anyway, but I have no need to kill them, and I'm not ignorant enough to think that they're a threat and therefore deserve to die. So I'll just throw that out there. I still do have some finishing work on these stairs. But as I was saying before, now they at least look like stairs. I gotta let these dry out a little bit more to do some smoothing. And then these other ones, I'm just going to uh, do the stuff after they dry. But as is often the case right now, I'm fighting the rain on this one. I was gonna do this yesterday. Woke up, didn't sleep good at all, took care of some business. Came out here to work and it started raining. And I said, fine. Went inside, took a nap. When I took a nap, it quit raining. So I wake up, it's not raining anymore. Come outside and it starts raining again. I'm like, are you kidding me? And then today I waited forever to even start this because it said off and on thunderstorms all day. I kept kind of watching the sky being like, yeah, I could see where that could happen. And it never did. Um, just a minute ago, it actually started uh, sprinkling, but we haven't really had anything. Ultimately, I'm glad to be back up to surface level on here. Um, it took me a long time, but I decided not to go in from the top and then to cut this and to do everything I've done. But I got here. Thankfully, the rest of the materials have held up really well. And this is an important step of progress for my family. They're moving the sheep right now, so they're gonna be uh, noisy. But anyway, some good work done today. Some good time with the family today. Saw a couple cool animals, uh, always like stuff like that. Snake bites from non-venomous snakes aren't really that big of a deal, um, as long as you keep your wounds clean. There's not much to worry about, even some of the more defensive ones like the uh, non-venomous water snakes like Nerodia. So your plain-bellied water snake, northern water snake, broad-banded water snake. They're very defensive and they have like a, uh, 
a blood thinner, an anticoagulant in their saliva. So when they bite you, you tend to run a little bit. Plus if your hands are wet by the water, but it's not really anything to worry about. And that's like why even when I saw that one in there, I knew exactly what it was. I thought I'd give my son the opportunity to grab it. So he did. And um, it's a skill that they have. They don't need to be afraid of the stuff that doesn't uh, need to be afraid of. So let them do it, right boy? Yes, sir, he says. All right, I got a couple other things to do before sundown. I guess that's a video. We'll see you next time. Pop up. Thank you for watching.